The purpose of this video is to show you the components of the Bruker Tracer handheld XRF unit and then we'll show you how to put it together. This is the Bruker handheld XRF unit. This is the top or front panel. This is the place where you would insert the PDA unit. There are two warning lights. One will turn up yellow, the other one will be red. The yellow one indicates that the unit is on. The red one indicates that x-rays are being generated. There's also a location where you insert the key and turn on the unit. There is a port for a cable that will connect the unit to your laptop. Finally, there's a port for a key to allow you to insert the PDA. On the side of the unit, you can see another port this is where we insert the cable that allows you to remotely turn on or off the unit. There's also an on and off switch, which is often referred to as a trigger. On the base of the unit, on the bottom, is the hole where you can insert the battery. If you want to run the unit off of an AC adapter, there's a port for that as well. Finally, the nose of the unit. This is where the x-rays come out. If I position the unit like this, the x-rays would come out at a 45 degree angle. You can see a brass knurled knob. This is the location where you can insert filters. Finally, on the nose of the unit, you can see an aperture which is covered by a plastic window and also an infrared sensor that prevents you from operating the unit unless the sensor is covered. There are a few other important components. The unit comes with a small sample table that you can position on top. Make sure that you align the little diagram that indicates the PDA with where the PDA would be located. The little sample table also has a cap. When you place it on there, make sure that you align the yellow arrow with the white triangle over here. The other very important components include the keys that allow you to turn the unit on and off, the little box that contains the filters, a pair of tweezers or a hemostat that allows you to remove or position the filters, the cable that allows you to connect the unit to your laptop, and the cable that allows you to remotely switch it on and off. Finally, most of you will also have a vacuum pump. You can see it in the back here. It attaches to the unit with this transparent tubing. Now we are ready to put the unit together. We're going to start by inserting the battery. The battery goes into the bottom compartment. When it's fully inserted, you should hear it click. To remove the battery, press on the lever that releases it, and then pull out. We can connect it to the AC adapter using this cable. Now I'm going to seat it back on its stand for a second. The next step for me is to connect the cable that will allow it to communicate with the computer. The cable has two ends. One is a so-called LIMO connector. The other end is typically a USB port. The LIMO connector has a red dot on it. There's also a red dot at the bottom of the port where it goes. Make sure to align these, otherwise the unit will not function properly. Once it's firmly seated, you can attach the other end of the cable to your laptop. We can also attach the cable to allow remote control on and off of the unit. This is also a connector with a red dot on it, and we need to make sure to line it with the red dot on the port. Make sure it's seated securely. I'm now going to show you how to insert a filter. Remove the knurled knob. 
and then choose a filter from your filter set. The filter has two sides. One of them shows an, an oval shaped uh, window and the other side is rectangular. The rectangular side goes toward the top of the instrument. Use the hemostat to align it in its port and gently press it in. Once it's oriented, pull out the hemostat and then push it all the way in with the closed hemostat. Make sure to close the port with the brass knob. I'm going to insert the key in the front of the unit. I'm going to place the sample table on the top and for this demonstration we're going to put a stainless steel alloy coupon on the, the aperture of the instrument and then we're going to cover it with this cap. Now we're going to connect the vacuum pump to the instrument. The vacuum pump can be powered by a battery. This is very helpful when you don't have access to AC power and when you're traveling. The battery attaches inside the battery compartment. Today we're going to operate off of AC power. This transparent tubing connects the vacuum pump to the instrument. It has two different brass endings. The smaller one that is labeled instrument connects to the front panel. You can hear a click when it's securely seated. The longer brass terminal is labeled pump and it connects to the front of the pump. Note that it has a sliding brass ring. There's a small hole along the side of the brass connector and the sliding brass ring covers up that hole. This is when the vacuum pump can pull vacuum on the instrument. Again, you can hear a click when the brass terminal is securely attached to the pump. Now we can turn the pump on using this switch. Watch the numbers. They start out around 700 tor. Once I turn it on, they should quickly decrease down onto, under 10 tor. When you're using a vacuum, we recommend that you remove the filter. To turn off the vacuum pump, move the brass ring toward the instrument to slowly release the vacuum and allow air into the instrument. Then turn the switch off in the front.